Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a part. Um, we're actually going to create a finger joint box. I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to do the path um, pieces for that. And then we're going to actually cut it on the CNC and see what the, the thing looks like. I'm only going to show you one side or actually the bottom of the box because the sides are all the same thing. So it would be a long and boring video if I include them all. So to get started, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, which version of FreeCAD I'm using. And the reason I'm doing that is because I've noticed a lot of times when people are talking about FreeCAD, they say, hey, I don't have that button or I don't have this thing. And it's because they have a different version of FreeCAD. So I'm using the beta version, the pre-19 version. So it's FreeCAD 0.19 and it's the revision number 22611. And it's downloaded uh, from the FreeCAD website. If you go down below the current um, version, you'll see that there's other versions that you can download. And that's where I got this one. So version 22611 or a vision number of 0.19. Okay, got that out of the way. So with this box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a macro. And for those of you who have not run macros, there are a lot of macros that you can um, download. If you go to um, add-ons here, you can click on macros. Oh, and by the way, the 0.18 version 18 or 0.18, there seems to be something wrong with this add-on manager. So it's not working properly. So that was the reason I upgraded to 0.19. And then since I've been using it, it's just it just seems to be much better. So I'd recommend you go to version 0.19 if you haven't done that already. So in this list of macros, there's one called Box Creator. Now, I never wrote this. I wrote one for Fusion. Uh, for Fusion 360, I wrote a um, finger joint box creator. It's, it's different to this one. Um, works differently. In fact, this one's a little more, um, has a few more features than mine did. But I thought I was going to have to create a new one here in uh, FreeCAD, but it turns out somebody's already done that work for me and it's fantastic. And if I click on there, you'll see, um, oh, here it is. The author is Christy. So I don't know who Christy is, but thank you, Christy, for doing this. So that being said, what we're going to do is we will close that and go back into our macro. And we'll say run the box creator. So this is what box creator looks like. It looks like this. So box creator says, what width of a box do you want? I want mine to be 105 millimeters. What height? I actually want it to be 50. And what length? I want it to be 65 millimeters. And I want my material to be five millimeters thickness. And I'm quite happy to have the notches or the fingers be eight millimeters. I don't need a top on my box. So I want a bottom, a right, a back, a left, and a front. I'm not doing any overhangs. I'm not doing any compartments. So I'm not going to play with those pieces. If you watch here, when I click this create box, it's basically created the box. I'm going to close the macro uh, now. If you look at the box, it's actually a you know, solid box with finger joints. It's exactly what I wanted. And if you look here, each side has its own model. So I can click on that box, hit my space bar to hide it, click on the bottom, hit my space bar to show just the bottom. That's the piece we're going to make. So of course, I'm going to make the left, right, front and back. But I'm only going to show you the bottom because I don't want to waste a lot of time for you. So. Having done that, we've created the, the model, we've created the bottom. I'm actually already in the path workbench. So that's just a workbench from the list. So the path workbench is where you create your paths for CNC. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's create a new path job object. And I'm going to say, just include the bottom and say, OK. And now what I like to do, you see this creates a little box here. What I like to do is use the extend the models bounds, but I don't want to extend them by anything. I want them to be zero. So I'm, I'm actually going to go to zero and zero and zero and zero and zero and zero. 
So that is my bounding box for my path job. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to move this origin up to the top point. So I want everything to work from the top face. I want to set that as zero and then it cuts downwards rather than um, having the bottom as a zero. So I'm just going to click on that point there and say set origin. And now the origin is up at the top, which is exactly where I want it. And now we'll go through. So that's my setup for the, for the, uh, the work piece. Now we'll go through this thing here and set up. I can set up a label. I'm going to call this box bottom. You can call it whatever you like. And I'm going to put a description in here and say, this is the bottom. Get my cursor out of the way. This is the bottom of a 105 by 65 by 50 finger joint box. So that's all just for info. And then um, I'm not going to set my output file because I'll do it when I save my G code. And then my tools, I have a tool that I want to add. So I'm going to click add. Here's my tool. I have a three millimeter end mill that I already defined in here. So I'm going to click on that. Now the gotcha on this, I always click OK and then have to come back and, and put the tool in again because you have to actually click create tool controller. So you click that, you see it shows up over there. Then you can say OK. And then for me, I'm just going to get rid of this default tool because I don't need it for this particular operation. So I'm just going to use this 3 mil uh, end mil as my um, tool of choice to cut around this these edges here. And then the rest of it, I'm just leaving as default. I say OK to that. And now I have my job set up. And of course, I want to do uh, profile around here. So I'm going to click on the profile and what that's going to do is it's going to give me some options. Again, I have my three mil M mil is the only tool there. So it's, that's the one that's already selected. If there were others, you'd be able to select them from that drop down. I don't have coolant because I'm cutting wood, so we don't need coolant. Um, we're cutting on the outside, which is obviously where we want to be. <clears throat> and then you have your cut direction. So this is clockwise. And this is counterclockwise. So this would be climb milling. The other way is standard milling. Um, and that's basically what I'm going to do for this part. And these heights, my safe height is three millimeters and my clearance height is five millimeters. That's coming up. You can increase those if you want. They're actually created from uh, the size of the stock and then it adds a piece. I'm not quite sure how it or why that's logical. To me, it depends what kind of fixture you have it in or what other things you have in, on your table as to how high you want to clear and come up when you're done. Uh, but for this case, 5 mil will probably be fine. Um, I'm going to let that go. And then for your depths, you can check. So mine starts at 0, and it goes out to minus 0.5. So this is the 0, and then minus 0.5 is the bottom. And then it's coming down in three mil steps. So I expect to see two steps around the outside. The first one will be three mil deep. And then the second one will be two mil deep because I'm only going five mil in. So I'm going to apply that. And then I can see my, um, my path in there as we expect. I'll say OK. And now let's have a look at what we've got here. You see my path seems to have shot down below this model. And this is because I moved the, the origin up to this corner. So I literally moved the whole job up by uh, 5 mil. So if I get rid of that bottom that was modeled and go into my path job, there's a model copy there. And I turn that guy on. You'll see that's actually copied into the right place. So now it all looks sensible. You've actually got the cuts in the right place. So that can be really confusion, confusing, particularly if you have to rotate the model through 90 degrees, you get some weird outputs, but the end result is it's cutting the right piece. So what we can do now, if we want to, is we could simulate that. But what I actually want to do is under these operations, there's the profile. I want to do a path, path dress up. 
So dress ups are basically additional things that you're going to do on that path. And you can do a ramp entry, um, which I didn't see it in that list. And I asked a question in the forum. Somebody responded to me and I kind of hit my forehead and went dope. Didn't, I didn't realize it was a dress up, that the ramp entry was going to be a dress up. In Fusion, the way that would work is if you go into your operation, then ramp entry is just an option in the operation and you pick ramp entry and then you can give it all the parameters around the ramp entry. In FreeCAD, these dress ups are additional things that you add to an operation. So for this one, what we actually want to do is because we're using a round cutter and that round cutter is going to cut into these corners, it's going to leave a radius. So to get over that, you have to cut in with a cutter and create what's called a dog bone. So I'm going to click on my profile, path, path dress up, dog bone dress up. So that's applied it. And what it's done, if you look now, you have a little, a little path that goes in and it will cut a little dog bone. So we're going to do, I'm going to move that guy so we can see it in the middle like that. And then I'm going to do the simulation. So simulate path, turn it on. You'll see what it's going to do. Start in this corner, it'll go to that end and it'll go around and you can just barely see the dog bones. I'll zoom in on one in a minute, but you see it took the first pass down three mil, second pass all the way down. And in this particular case, I didn't use any tabs. Um, you certainly could use tabs to stop it coming loose. But to be honest, it's only five mil thick. And when it comes loose here, it's still got stuff all around it. So I don't think it's a big deal that you actually let it go right there. So now that that's done, I'll zoom in and you can see where it tried to simulate the dog bone. That's basically what it's going to do is it's going to cut in a little bit and give us a dog bone in those corners so that we can attach pieces and they'll work together. Okay, now one thing I like to do is cancel this because otherwise it will save this piece here and that's just a piece of mess that I don't want to keep on the screen. So once that's done, so here you can see my speeds and feeds are just set whatever the tool, whatever my machine was running at is what it's going to run at. So I'm going to change these feeds and speeds. I'm going to create, I like my horizontal feed to be 300. I like my vertical feed to be 100. I don't like to do anything too quickly. And then what I'm going to do with these uh, rapids is I'm going to say my horizontal is going to be horizontal feed. And I'm just going to times that by 1.5. And that will give me my rapid. And then for this guy, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say vertical feed times 1.5 and say OK. And you'll see, so then I have three, 450 for my horizontal rapid, 150 for my vertical rapid, and then my actual feeds are 300 and 100 respectively. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that out, put it the same file, say yes. And now if you look, here are the speeds actually put in. The F is the speed, so F300, it's actually added those onto my each of my lines, which my um, CNC likes that to have it on every line. And so you just set the speed for every line. And away we go. Most everything is going at 300, which actually works quite well because, I'm, you know, it's a little cutter and it's cutting at 3 mil deep. It's only a 3 mil diameter and it's plenty for it. So I'm quite happy with that. So the next thing to do is to load that up to my CNC. And for that, I use um, Octoprint. I just put mine in Octoprint and then go down and actually cut the file. So when we go downstairs and cut the file, I'll show you Octoprint and I'll show you how I set up my job and get it running. So here's a quick look at the Octoprint screen. You can just see how I set it up quick. I have some buttons on there. There's other videos I've got to show all the settings on the Octoprint, so we're not going to run into all that. I always set my depth with this touch tool. Uh, it allows me to set the surface of the, the job. And you can see on this job, I'm just using a piece of scrap um, 
plywood to make the sides of the boxes. I have a bunch of scrap stuff that's only 5mm thick, and so I'm using that to cut out this box. And you can see the job's pretty straightforward. It's a 2D job, just doing profiles for each of the sides. I'm not going to show you every single side cut out. And then finally, you can see the box and how it all fits together. I haven't done any finishing on this yet, so I haven't glued it together yet, but I thought I'd just get it done so I can get the video out. But you can see it, it makes a, an adequate box and everything looks good. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope you'll like it. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel as we're trying to build our uh, subscribership. So thanks. See you in the next one.